Welcome sixth graders. So here uh, we're continuing our lessons uh, learning about Mesopotamia. So one important thing about Mesopotamia, and there are quite a few of them, are their various achievements. So we're going to go through and look at their various achievements today. So the first are the agricultural achievements. Again, the development of irrigation, very important because now you're able to have fertile soil and land away from the rivers uh, that can help keep them irrigated uh, in times of drought. Uh, their early tools are sickles and hoes, which we know are made out of stone or softer materials. Then they eventually get into the metalworks, so they start having bronze and copper tip plows, which is useful because they're able to <clears throat> have them sharper and last longer and dig deeper and just make life a lot easier for them. And they also were able to invent a funnel that attached to the plow so that they could seed and plow at the same time, which was really nice because then they could uh, speed up the work. And lastly, they began to write almanacs about when to plant water and how to care for their crops. Again, useful information that people could reuse year after year so that they can continue the growth of their crops. All right, another achievement is measurements. While we don't think measurements are probably that important today, back then they were a huge thing. So knowing the size of the cities and farm and farmers' land uh, led to the development of a standard measurement. This was called the Iku or Ikum, uh, which was about 37,600 feet square feet. Uh, this is where the idea of what we call an acre now comes from. An acre is a little bit larger than that, but it comes from that same idea. Uh, in fact, our school sits on 36 acres of land, which is kind of cool. Uh, a, a standard measure of weight and volume. Again, the, they came up with this for trade so that you know farmers didn't have to guess about how much food they were trading away or making in their trades. They actually had a correct measurement and uh, an idea of exactly what they were trading for and giving away. Uh, the Sumerians also developed a number system, uh, which was based on the number 60. Ours is based on the number 10. Uh, theirs was 60. Uh, and, but this is also where we get the idea of time from. And you can see they developed a calendar, a 360-day calendar. We have a 365-day calendar. So, you know, they were not far off when we're talking, you know, 5,000 to 8,000 years ago. Another achievement of them was their buildings. Uh, because of the lack of trees in Mesopotamia, they had to build mud. They had to build using mud bricks. Uh, the houses that most people lived in were simple, flat-roofed structures, where the kings and other officials could live in two or more stories. Also, those simple structures all faced a courtyard uh, that could have um, that would help house food and, and things of that nature. Uh, artists right so things that didn't exist before because there was an economic surplus now there is the surplus so you have artists create these beautiful tiles that could decorate and ornate uh, and houses the biggest thing here to understand is the relationship within which religion plays in everything as well so it's not necessarily like a, an achievement in terms of like building but we talked about it in the last lesson about how uh, the government controlled religion and how religion was becoming a bigger and bigger part of their lives. So you start to see these buildings called ziggurats. Uh, and they are huge buildings that were always in the center and always the tallest uh, building in every city-state of Mesopotamia. Uh, and at the top, a ziggurat would have a shrine to a god, one of the various gods to which they worshipped. Remember, they're polytheistic, so that there would be many gods uh, that could be in these shrines. Uh, eventually, uh, they built smaller buildings and parks uh, were placed near the ziggurat as well. All right, so it kind of came like the center of town, the center where everybody was supposed to go and do conduct business and enjoy themselves and relax and where their um, world revolved around. Another achievement is transportation. So the wheel dates back to this time, about 35,000 BCE in Mesopotamia. And they would they came up with a cart system, either two or four wheels, and that were pulled by donkeys. And these traders would use uh, have these caravans, so uh, lots of people. Um, 
that were pulled by donkeys and these paths they use the same paths over and over again and these are where we get the idea of trade routes from these are where trade routes come from people would go along the same path um, and we would that's where that's where they came from uh, secondly they also did things by water because uh, they're the two rivers so uh, the earliest boats were kind of shaped like a basket and built out of reeds and wrapped in an animal skin to make them waterproof and then they would have a, a mast in the middle of it so kind of very similar to a sailboat but not like the sailboats that we think of that are long and sleek these are shaped more like a long a burger basket round uh, not very um, suited for long distance travels and then also they had uh, canoes for shorter distance travel and trade all right, and then our last achievement is writing and literature. And this is probably one of the most important aspects because this is when we see writing uh, come about. So the Sumerians' first known written records are about 3500 BCE. By about 3100, we see evidence uh, that have the Sumerians creating this standardized system of writing, which is called cuneiform. And what they would do, and I'll show you a picture, they would take a clay tablet and they'd have this little triangular shaped wedge and that's how they would make it. It's based on 700 different symbols, all right? So you would have to be a very skilled uh, person to do this and it was a very specialized job, okay? These people are known as scribes and they were the only ones who could write and read uh, what were the recorded events on the clay tablets. Kings probably could be able to read them as well. But for most people, for 99% of the people, you had to hire a scribe to do uh, to write something down. And I will tell you, almost every single early clay tablet that they have ever found is about the trade of somebody's livestock for grain or grain for grain. That's all they are. They're not super um, energetic. They are not super uh, interesting. It's really just the day-to-day -day operations of the economy. So if you ever need a good read, look some of those up. And then, um, so again, you know, this writing system helps make the government, the economy, society possible. Uh, scribes keep kept records of boundary lines. So a farmer knew where his farmland was. Uh, so, you know, there, if there was ever a dispute about who was farming whom's land, uh, they could go back to the scribe and the scribe would tell them. Uh, they kept track of wars, the lists for the kings, the trade, uh, and food supplies. Lastly, once this becomes more prevalent, you know, we're talking probably closer to 2500 BCE. Don't quote me on that date. Uh, but scribes start recording literature and writing down songs and stories. So again, the majority of writing uh, was done for... Um, Keeping track of keeping track of the economy, keeping track of lists for kings, uh, it was kind of very boring, uh, but very specialized skill. So here we have this picture of uh, a scribe, and you notice that he is writing in this soft clay tablet. You can see his tool that he was using, and if we look here, um, you know the we have pictograph here in the second column from the left. Uh, then you have early cuneiform and um, later cuneiform. So you can see as it kind of advances and develops, um, it becomes more unique, but it's always in this web-shaped form. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll cut you on the flip side.